Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be covering CSS variables and how they can be used to create a light and dark theme for your website. Let's get started now. To get started, I have a basic HTML file on the left here, which imports our styles.css file, our script file for our JavaScript, and contains two divs named 1 and 2 with some child elements inside of them named 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, and 2, 2. And then finally, a couple buttons at the bottom with unique IDs, which we're going to use to swap around our themes. To get started, let's go into our styles.css and actually talk about how we can use CSS variables. At first, CSS variables may seem like a complicated topic, but really they work just like any other CSS property, except for you get to define this property yourself as a custom property. Most of the time, where you want to declare CSS variables is either in the root or HTML of your document, because CSS variables, just like all other CSS properties, cascade down and can be inherited or overridden in lower down more specific elements. So for example, let's just say we wanted to create a background color for all of our different elements. We'll just call it div background color, and we'll set that to red. So now we can break apart this syntax. CSS variable, all it is, is any declaration that begins with two hyphens just like this. So two hyphens, and then the name of your variable comes afterward, and then you just give it a value just like you would any other CSS property. And we can do this with a bunch of different variables. Let's say we wanna call another variable called text color. We'll just set that to black. We're gonna add padding to our different elements. So we'll just create a div padding variable. And then lastly, we'll do the same thing, but we'll just do margin. We'll also set that to 10 pixels. And if you save that, you see that nothing actually happens on our page over on the right. And that's because we haven't actually used these variables. So now let's go ahead and assign these variables to our different child elements. So we can say dot child here, and this is going to select all of these different elements, one, 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 two, and so on, because we have this class on them in the HTML. And we can just set the background color, for example. So let's say we want to set the background color. And we want to set it to that variable that we defined of the div background color here. So to do that, we use the var function, and then inside of this var function, all we do is pass the different variables that we want. So in our case, we want to use the div background color variable, and that's going to assign this variable red here to this background color. And now if we save that, you see that each one of these elements now has a background color that's red. And we can also go even further and add the color variable here. So we can just say the color, it's going to be var text color. And if we save this, you'll see that our text color is black, but it was already black, so really that doesn't make much difference. But let's say that we want all of these that start with the one, which is inside of that one div, as you can see here, inside of this one div, we have these three children. Let's say that we want to change the background color in those. Instead of actually going in and making the background color different, we can just override the variable. So in that one div that we have, we can just take this div background color variable, and we can change it to blue, for example, and now if we save that, you see that everything inside of one here changes to a background color of blue because this variable starts as red, gets overridden in this dot one to be blue, and then when it gets to the dot child selector, it's using the blue variable since it was overridden. We can do the same thing with text color. So if we just copy this, change this to be text color instead, and let's say we want it to be white, and we save that, and now you see that our text color is white inside of the one div, but not inside of the two div, since we haven't actually specified anything inside of that to div yet, and it just uses this base value that's inherited from the root. Another nice thing about variables, which is really the biggest use case for them, is that you can use them in multiple places in your application and change them in one spot, and it'll change it everywhere. So for example, let's say that we wanted to select this 1.1 element, and we wanted to give it a little bit of margin, so we could set the margin here to be equal to that variable that we created, which is div margin, and we can do the same thing, but in this case, we want to do padding instead of margin. And if you save that, you see that we now get that padding and margin around 1.1. But let's say we wanted to do the same thing for 1.2. Well, we can just use that same exact variable and that same exact padding, and you save it, and you see that we get that margin and padding around 1.2 and 1.1. But let's say we ended up saying we want our padding to actually be 20 instead of 10. So we update it here once in that variable, and we save it, and you see it updates everywhere that that variable is used. And that's incredibly useful and really the biggest use case for CSS variables over actually just hard coding 10 pixels or 20 pixels, because then you would need to find where it's used in all those cases. The last thing we need to talk about with CSS variables is having a fallback value for when your variable is not declared. 
So for example, if inside of our body we wanted to change the background color, and we wanted the background color to be dependent on a variable, which we're just going to call background color, and we say that we don't actually have a variable for background color. So we can say if there is no background color variable, we just want to fall back to the color pink. And if you say that, you see it falls back to the color pink because background color is not defined anywhere. But we're going to actually define this background color in JavaScript later using these dark and light themed buttons. So until we define that, we want to just fall back to pink in this case. So now we can talk about how we can use CSS variables in JavaScript, which is what makes CSS variables so powerful compared to using something like SAS or less because you can actually use these variables in JavaScript itself. So let's open up our JavaScript file here and go through the different ways that we can both access these CSS variables and change these CSS variables. To get started, let's show you how to get the variables from your CSS. For example, we want to get the variables from the root of our element, which is the document.document .document element. But in order to get the actual variables, we need to get the computed style of this element, which is just a function on Windows. So we say window.getComputedStyle, and we just pass the element we want to get the computed style for. Once we do that, we can just call get property value, and we just pass it the name of the variable that we want to get. This can also be used to get any property value in CSS, but we're just going to use it specifically for variables. So let's say that we want to get the background color. Okay, there we go. We got the background color. And let's just say we want to log that out. So we'll just console.log that background color. Open this up so we can actually inspect it. And if I pull this over here and save this, you see that we get red being printed out because that's the value of div background color. If we look at text color, for example, you see that we're going to get black. And we can do this for any of our different variables. So now we can exit out of that and we can actually talk about making these different buttons set the variables that we want to change so that it'll actually update our CSS dynamically. The first thing that we need to do is actually assign an event listener for the click of these buttons. So we can just say document.getElementById. We have an ID on this element of dark theme button. And then we just want to add an event listener. In our case, it's going to be a click event listener. And this click event listener, we're going to find a different function to it. And then inside of this function is where we want to set the value of this variable. So again, we can get the root element of our document by document.document .document element. Then we can access the style, which is just going to be all of the different CSS for this element. And we can say set property, which is where we want to set a different property based on the name. And in our case, we just want to set that background color variable that we're using inside of our code for the CSS. And we'll set it to a value here of 333, which is a dark gray color. Now, if we save that and we click dark theme, you'll see that our background color updates to be this dark gray color. And that's because we're setting the variable background color inside of our CSS root element to be this dark gray color. And inside of our CSS, we are using that variable here to set the actual background color. And since this variable is set, it's no longer showing as pink and it's showing as whatever this background color variable is. So now all we have to do is the exact same thing, but for our light theme, so we can just change dark theme to light theme. And instead of doing this dark gray color, we can just use white. And now if we save that, you see our dark theme button changes it to dark and our light theme button changes it to light. And that's exactly what we wanted. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on CSS variables and learn how you can use them in not only your CSS, but also your JavaScript and how it can make your code cleaner and easier to use. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to check out my other tutorials on CSS and JavaScript linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a good day.